Hello and welcome everyone, and Wolf here bringing you a new Let's Play of Crusader Kings 2. Developed by Paradox Development Studio and published by Paradox Interactive. If you're unfamiliar with Crusader Kings 2, this is a grand strategy game, alike to a good number of Paradox's gaming titles. But unlike another which you may be familiar with from my channel, which is Europa Universalis 4, CKH2 is set prior to that game in the timeline set during the Middle Ages. And rather than playing as one nation and focusing on its expansion through conquest or colonization, obviously starting in the 15th century, Crusader Kings 2 focuses on you as a ruler and building your dynasty, trying to maintain its strength, and you can play as, say, a count, a duke, a king, and basically you can either build tall by maintaining your vassals if you have any in a county and keeping them happy, or expanding and trying to form an empire. Of course, then you have a bit more micromanagement in your core, trying to keep everyone under you content and not trying to kill you which is what we're going to be doing here in this campaign i haven't touched crusader kings 2 for maybe six months a year and i don't think i've recorded a playthrough of this for my channel but most recently i think it was on the 25th of august 2016 paradox released the next major expansion known as the Reaper's Dew, which has optimized the game slightly, made it run a bit more smoothly, and coming back there are a lot more a lot more events um, that can transpire that have got me enjoying the game once again, so I want to share that experience with you and hopefully I can survive. My bloodline will grow strong. So, we're going to play a single player campaign. We're going to play back in the early Middle Ages, starting at 769 AD. Prior to when the, first, when the game first came out, the game started in 1066 AD. But with later expansions, they introduced the Viking Age, and then they've introduced the early Middle Ages. So, let us start. I think we're going... I think the game goes all the way to 1452 and if you're still alive at that point that's when the game ends and you tally up your score so in 769 AD it recommends you play as maybe one of these rulers they these are the recommended probably the most powerful people in the game right now we're not going to be any of them we're going to be playing a quite small quite passive game we are going to be a petty king, a duke, here in Wales. It is Wales, isn't it? Let's double check. Culture, yeah. We are going to be Welsh. We are going to be trying to create the Kingdom of Wales by integrating our neighbours. And I don't think... I'm not sure when, which expansion this land bridge was added, but I don't think it was there when I played the game previously. So once we've stabilised the Kingdom of Wales, we may cross over and try to take over the Kingdom of Ireland. At the moment, over in Ireland, there are no dukes. They're all independent, count, independent counts. So as long as it, main, it remains that way, they should be easy pickings. Should being the word. We're gonna have enough trouble in I sorry in Wales first of all to start thinking about crossing the crossing St George's Channel. We aren't gonna be using the ruler designer. We could do that if we wanted to game the system slightly. We're gonna be of the Morgan Wing dynasty. Let's um, be frank. I'm going to be mispronouncing names horribly. Apologies in advance if, especially if you're Welsh, apologies in advance. If you're not and I mispronounce where you come from, or maybe your name is mentioned, maybe you are a noble, 
in this game, apologies that I'm probably going to massacre your name. Not intentionally, it just, it's going to happen. But yeah, we're going to be the Morganwing Dynasty. And we're going to see what happens. I have done a test video. I think I already have a son and a grandson. But I think all of their stats are randomly generated. So hopefully we get a good ruler. He's already 60 years of age. So he's already near death. We are Catholic, as is most of Western Europe. Though if you look over here in Iberia. Um... Yeah, it's been taken over by the Sultanate. And that probably won't change for many hundreds of years, so... Catholicism is probably going to disappear. But, yeah, we'll see what happens. Oh, last mention. I am not very good at this game. Um, I apologize in advance as well. I can't really tell you too many of the advanced game mechanics. I can barely understand the normal mechanics. So yeah, I'm going to mess up. If you want to maybe watch a playthrough of someone who actually knows what he's talking about as he's playing the game, you might want to go to someone like Arumba's channel because, yeah, he knows a lot more about this game. He's invested more time in this game than I have. So you'd be a lot more informative. But yeah, let's uh, begin. Uh, we'll turn on Iron Man mode, right? Why not? And this is another thing the Reaper's Dew expansion introduces the Bubonic Plague or the Black Death, which can normally pop up in 1345 AD. We're going to leave it as dynamic, so it could turn up in the 10th century if it really wanted to. Hopefully not. Um, at the same time, a lot more of the minor epidemics like smallpox, tuberculosis, typhoid, they will spring up a lot more often and they're a lot more deadly. Can they also kind of cause hilarious effects. We're going to turn off the Sunset Invasion. We'll leave the Mongol Invasion on. We're going to turn off Shattered Retreat. I'm not a great fan of it. I can't decide, really, if I like Shattered Retreat or not. We'll turn it off for this campaign. Defensive Pacts can be on. We'll leave... I think everything else we leave as default. We'll leave Supernatural Events on because that could be interesting. I would like to turn Adventurers off, but that would disable Achievements. So, yeah, I think everything else is fine. Okay, let us start the game. And we need to give it a title. So it will be the Morgan. There you go. Let's call it Iron 1. I would just call it Iron. There you go. Okay, let us begin. This first video is going to be mostly me setting up the campaign, so if you want to actually get to actual gameplay, feel free to skip ahead. Otherwise, let us start our series. We play as a succession of medieval rulers from a single dynasty. There is no set goal, but the world is filled with ambitious rivals. Secure more land to increase your power and protect your family. We are a Welsh Catholic king. We really are a duke, but the dukes here in Wales are classified as petty kings. We have the petty, the petty kingdom of Dehubath, which includes these three counties. And I think we also have a claim... on Drifford here. Yeah, it is classified as a Dure Kingdom, which is why we can automatically declare, declare on this count. He has 326 troops to my... about 430, 410. 
Let's have a look at our ruler. He is a cleric, which I don't like. He's lustful, wrath, proud. Okay. That's a lot of bad things, really. We have a lot of pop-ups here, which we need to deal with. Let's look at our son. He's chaste, which is not a good start. He's humble. Holy hell. And he's a detached priest. Is our grandson any good? Well, he's a tough soldier. He's honest, also chaste, zealous, and arbitrary. Or arbitrary, sorry. He's not bad. And he is... The steward of my son. My son actually controls this county here. Okay. So, first things first, we need to get married. Do we have... We want to become the King of Wales. That's probably not going to happen. I might be at peace for five years. Maybe. Um, oh, let's be fair. It's not going to happen. We're probably going to be declaring war on this count immediately. Meanwhile, we have another petty king. Who has 418 troops. He controls these two territories. Another petty king. There's 363. And if we look at the Kingdom of Wales, if we can, Cornwall, Cornwall and Devon are also classified as part of the Kingdom. And this Petty King has a lot more troops. You can get more troops by having a higher martial score, so immediately, I think I'm gonna take... I could take the martial, the war focus, and that'll get us plus three martial. But I tend to like to take the hunting focus, because it also gives us a little bit of extra health. And... the eh, decisions. Yeah, we want to try and live as long as possible. We also need to probably find... a... worthwhile wife. I don't expect to have any children, but half of your wife's stats actually are given to your ruler. So at the moment I probably want a brilliant strategist. She would be pretty good. We would lose prestige because we would be marrying someone of a lowborn house. But I accept that. I probably want my grandson to be married. He's actually 19 years of age. Because he's not in my court, I can only offer him... ...this courtier. And he'll refuse... ...because he wants... He wants um, some more st security in his um, county, or in, in his father's county. I could arrange a marriage for... My son would accept. Um, sure. So we'll arrange some marriages immediately. What else do we need to do? Let's have a look at my council. Now, this is one mechanic I I didn't really like in Crusader Kings 2. Some of my council, their various mayors and bishops, people who have titles, nobles in my realm, consider themselves powerful, and they expect to have a position on the council, and then they have more power. So, if they're not on the council, their opinion of us is dropped for one reason or another. So, sometimes they could be terrible at their job, like my son here is a terrible steward. But, because he's powerful, 
he is my steward. Basically, he has he has terrible stewardship, but ah, that's not how good is your learning. It's also terrible. Hmm, how is your learning? It's not. It's better than my son's. I might promote you to my chaplain. Will you do that for me? No, you won't. Oh well, I guess my son can remain steward, even though this guy is a hell of a lot better. So, first things first, we have a claim on Diffid already. I probably want a claim on Gwynid or... That's a difficult county name. I want to try and get a claim here. I want to be training troops. I want to be collecting taxes. I want to be researching cultural tech. And I want to be I want to be studying technology over in the Byzantine Empire. At the moment, if you look at my technology, it's absolutely horrible. That's because we're starting in 769 AD. And whereas like the Byzantine Empire are doing really well, we on the other hand are not. So we're gonna be trying to hopefully not get our spymaster caught, but borrowing some of their technological progress. Um, okay, so that's our council sorted. Let's have a look at our titles. We have no regent right now. We could probably give that position to our son. Where is he? Oh, he's not at my court. Okay. Who can I trust? Um, I can trust my Chancellor, hopefully. We need to summon a court physician. If we become ill, then we're going to need someone to heal us. So we can actually... We can send out messengers in search of someone. Which is what we'll do. We'll send out messengers and scouts in all directions. So that's another event that'll pop up. And now we need to give some special titles to people in power. This will increase their opinion of us. Okay. We have some commanders to lead our armies. Some of them aren't so great. And these are the various laws in my kingdom. At the moment, the inheritance law is Agnatic Cognatic Gavelkind, which means that my titles when I die are divided amongst all of my children, the oldest getting the most important, the primary title. Ah... <sighs> Decisions, decisions. I probably want to go towards elective monarchy. And then I can vote for who I want to be my heir. And my heir would then receive all of my titles. I would like primogenitor, but right now we don't have the acceptable we don't have the, the acceptable technology so yeah we'll go for elective monarchy and then we need to nominate our son so he's now being voted for and there's no one else who can vote I believe right now we can invoke some realm laws we can do this every 10 years I want to increase centralization. That means that I personally, or my ruler, can control more land. Like, personally. Before it becomes an issue. We don't need to worry about our technology right now. 
because we've increased our marshal slightly, we do have more troops we can now recruit. We can choose a plot. We could try and revoke the county of Gwent from our spy master and actually take it for ourselves. That's kind of tempting, to be honest. If we do that, because we are the duke of this, of these three counties, it's worthwhile having them under my direct control. I might try that. Um, hmm. We'll give it a try. We'll try and add people to the plot, people who will back me in this decision. And I'm actually going to turn on the auto stop plots. And that's if anyone tries to assassinate me or anyone I know, I'll automatically send them a message to stop them from trying to kill that person. If they refuse, then I have permission to imprison them. There are no factions in the, in the kingdom right now. That will change. And finally, this is the Catholic faith screen. Obviously, we see our Pope, Pope Stephanus III, and the bishops under us. This bishop is currently also my marshal. He quite likes us. Okay. So we're unmarried. But that will change momentarily when we unpause the game. We have a claim on this county here. Which we will press. We need to set our crown focus. Glamorgan will be more likely to prosper and may receive special events. This is Glan Morgan where we reign. We'll set this as the crown focus. And we've already summoned or started an event to summon a court physician. Okay, so we don't need to worry about any of these pop-ups anymore, apart from the one where we can press our claim. We are currently making a positive income per month. Obviously, we are slowly gaining prestige, which is how famous our ruler is. When our ruler dies, any prestige he has goes to our total score. And our total score will be accumulated amongst all of our rulers. And at the end of the game, whether or not we survive or not, our score will be compared to other like famous bloodlines to see how well we've done. Our piety is how respected we are by the clergy. Obviously our domain size, we only control one county right now. How many vassals we can have. And how large our realm is. Which is like the total size of our kingdom. Okay, I don't think there's any anything else we need to do. I couldn't pause the game, but I think this is, this is a good point to end this first video. Just as we're setting up the kingdom. And we'll unpause and get some marriages underway, get our physician at the beginning of the next video. So yep, this of course is Antwerp playing Crusader Kings 2. Feel free to comment, as I say, this is a slow, this will be a slow campaign. Obviously we're starting off quite small. We have no opportunity to raid our neighbours, that's something that only the... I think, let's find the cultures button. I think it's only something the Norse... Is this the right culture? I think it's something only the Norse and the Romanova can do. And I don't think they can do it just yet. Or maybe I'm wrong. Let's have a look. Maybe, ah, it's maybe religions. The Germanic and the Romanova religions. But uh, yeah, we'll end this video here. I hope you've all enjoyed and I'll see you for more next time. Until then though, bye bye now.